That looks like a wing of some sort. Where could they be going? Mabuhay! Welcome to the Philippines! We're on a mission to find out whether it is more fun in the Philippines, as they say. Manila was once an ideal port for Spanish ships, bearing gold, spices, silk and ceramics. As such, Spanish influence on Filipino culture has been profound. Today, Manila is a hub for Filipino culture, history, shopping and nightlife. If you're in the Philippines for the first time, don't skip this bustling city. Okay, time to check into our hotel. Wakey wakey! You guys get the picture. There's one guy from Mexico traveled from a long uh, time ago and was a uh, Philippine was named from his name, King Philip II, which is uh, the, the name Philip into Philip. Okay. Okay. Kampai. Z Hostel uh, began uh, with a group of friends. We got together and he brought up the idea of putting up a hostel in the Philippines. We came up with Z. Z stands for sleep. So basically when you see Z, 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 what does it remind you of, right? We wanted to provide a fun and uh, exciting environment but 
at the same time have a good night sleep. Um, and when we opened, the roof deck became super popular with the locals. So basically, it's, it's a place where full of good vibes. You can meet uh, other travelers with a, you know common interests. After staying in the hostel, what can our guests do? Where, where can they go? And that's when we realized, why not curate the neighborhood? So I think that, in a nutshell, is how the neighborhood became Poblacion. Right, lunchtime it is. This spot is our go-to cafe in Southeast Asia because of the food, ambiance and overall dining experience we get every time we visit. They just have a way of making guests remember them. Come here, have a look, have a look. Ooh, fancy. Hello? Yeah? Are you calling me just to talk sh**? Don't piss me off. Coffee makes everything better. Wishing you all a very happy birthday in advance. Whenever we travel, we look forward to experiencing a destination's gastronomic offers, specifically because food provides an important link to cultural heritage and national identity. We have to say that our experience here was absolutely mind-blowing. We sampled some traditional dishes with a uniquely creative twist. From the country's quintessential national dishes like adobo, to comforting rice porridge with aromatic toppings, everything on the menu was delicious. some room for desserts and ice cream which we discovered are all made from scratch but also inspired from Filipino delicacies like the award-winning Puto Bumbong Waffles which is a recreation of a traditional dessert served during Christmas time. Our next recommendation is this homely restaurant where you can get fusion Asian foods and desserts. Our two appetizers. This one over here is the shimeji stir fry. So that is made with uh, shimeji mushrooms and a bit of sliced tofu. Okay, so it's uh, one of our best selling appetizers. Uh, it's also very good for people who uh, have a vegetarian diet. Uh, and uh, our next one over here, this would be our pig ear jelly. So this is one of our more unique dishes. So 
Uh, pig ear is something that is uh, quite commonly used in Filipino cuisine. Uh, we use it in, I don't know if you guys have been able to try uh, sisi while well, you guys are here. We have, yes, Very delicious. Good, right? Delicious. So that is made with like uh, a bunch of ingredients from like the pig's face, right? So this is one of those dishes where we use um, the pig ear and then we use a, I believe it is a, an East Asian, more of a Chinese technique to, to use like, to kind of like jellify uh, the meat. Uh, so this is uh, something that I, I've actually not been able to try before. So when our, when one of my aunts came up with this dish, like it, it felt like something we wanted to serve at the restaurant because it's very unique. And this one I'm very excited for you to try. Me too. All right. <laughs> Uh, and then you guys are also getting, this is one of our best sellers at the end over here, salted egg shrimp. So, um, not really Filipino or Chinese. Uh, I believe this is more of a, if I'm not mistaken, a Singaporean dish. So our concept focuses mainly on uh, mixed Asian cuisine. So we, we are a Chinese family, actually, Chinese Filipino family. Uh, but we wanted this restaurant to kind of represent um, more you know, different uh, Asian uh, cultures, different Asian cuisines. So like a fusion. Like a fusion. So the last dish is our crispy kare kare. So kare kare is a dish that's very popular in the Philippines. So that is, uh, so kare kare typically is uh, a softer dish. It's typically not fried pork. Uh, usually it would be pork belly, uh, but it's stewed rather than what we do now. So what we're having here is a deconstructed version of kare kare. So this is a crispy pork belly and we put the kare kare sauce on the side for you. So this is, uh, the kare kare sauce is uh, peanut paste. We're gonna try our cocktails. We have some specialties on the list. Uh, all of our specialties here are, are my recipes. Uh, and But we have some classics as well if you wanna have the, just the classics. that I really recommend uh, having with a fried snack. Uh, like our, uh, we have a crispy squid, uh, we have a salt and pepper tofu, and that goes pretty well with it. Another cocktail, come by to that. So these are our best-selling desserts. The, the panna cotta, uh, I would recommend to wait a few minutes because uh, uh, that came from the freezer, but uh, the chocolate mousse should be ready. Can be attacked immediately. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, so there's a legend of a rabbit being on a moon. The rabbit is kind of like the assistant of the moon goddess. Uh, and the reason for the rabbit being on the moon is very different uh, among uh, Asian cultures. But all of them do agree that if you look at uh, the full moon, uh, the full moon bright at night, you will see the silhouette of a rabbit. I can show you guys a picture of that later. This authentic Cantonese tea house needs no introduction. It's already an institution in Binondo, the world's oldest Chinatown. Synchronized stirring.
Let's move on to our guide of some of the things to do here, starting with something all Filipinos love to do, going to the mall. Sweet Coco, Caramel Nuts, and Classic Cristal. European festival siya, galing Romania. I'm gonna try two. Okay, you try. Yes. And I Caramel Nuts. Okay, okay, let me try yes. this one okay, then. Okay. Someone in this transaction made a loss. Yeah. Ho! Ha! Hey! Hi! Can you edit that out please? This one is for our sunset lovers, the kind of sunset lovers to take a million photos just like we do. Now, head over to Instagram and like our photos. of Intramuros in Manila was built by the Spaniards around 400 years ago as the political and military base in Asia. Walking or biking around is still the best way to explore Thank you, my and learn friend. more about its rich history. Or you could do it in style and hire a calesa, aka a horse cart. Knock knock. Knock knock. You're supposed to say who's there. We'd like you to sit back, relax and take in the atmosphere. Maybe learn some history too. Say hi for the camera, guys. Hey! Hey, welcome to the Philippines. Like and subscribe and share. <laughs> Click the <laughs> notification bell. Notification bell. Like this, like this, hey, like this. Hey. Nice one. Hey. I need that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. You heard them. Like, comment, and subscribe. Why did the tourists cross the road? To go to the park. This park is an iconic place that carries a rich history. It's where the country's national hero was executed by the Spanish colonizers. Bwomp, bwomp, bwomp. Founded in 1594, Binondo holds the distinction of being the oldest Chinatown in the world. It has since become a melting pot with many stories to tell and a lot of things to do in Binondo involve exploring its rich heritage.
He's got holes in different area codes. In the now renovated former HSBC building in Manila's Chinatown lies the Grand Cafe that's become sort of like a museum of old photos of Manila's past. That wasn't me. Next up, the perfect place to have a sundowner. You're welcome. San Miguel is the local beer of choice in the Philippines. Light, crisp and refreshing. Come by. And we're back at Z Hostel to enjoy our last evening in Manila. It's often said that what makes a place is its people. It's a general conception that Filipinos are admired for their warm hospitality. For first-time travelers who have never had an encounter with Filipinos, you might be surprised that the country's locals are extremely welcoming and kind-hearted. This made our time in Manila extremely special. It made us realize that the world needs more meaningful, real-life connections, such as the ones we've just experienced here. Barman. I'm really going to miss you. Okay. Like, subscribe and share. <laughs> Click the <laughs> notification bell. Notification bell. Like this, like this, like this. Hey. Hey. Hey.